I have with me here today Rose Hall with AxXL, um, and Rose is also our board member with Claims Exchange. Hi, Rose. How are you? Hey, I'm great. How are you? I'm fantastic. Thanks for taking the time to speak with me today. You bet. So Rose is also a very dear friend of mine, so I know a lot about Rose, but wanted to share um, some of the things I know as well as have her share about herself a little bit. So Rose, why don't we start with what is your position at AxXL? What do you do there? So I'm the strategic operations manager for our risk engineering group in our North America construction business unit. So I work with the risk engineering head. We lead a team of risk engineers who are consultants to the underwriters and they're consultants to our contractor customers when it comes to all things construction risk management. Now, you are in a, in a, in a place, as far as your job goes, that it is not um, very well, where women aren't really a big part of this. You're, you're very much in a male dominated industry, not only just insurance, but with, with risk and with construction. How, how do you get there? Like, what did you do to get there? Yeah, I think anybody that says they're in a male dominated industry, um, if they haven't been on a job site, then, then they really know what's a male dominated industry, right? On a construction <laughs> yeah. site. Um, it's a great question. And I think it goes back to, when I was a kid, my mom was a lawyer and my dad was a doctor and they both said, don't you dare go to med school or law school. So I went to engineering school. <laughs> um, no, I love math and science and I didn't want to, um, I didn't want to be a professor or a theorist. And I thought, well, what's the practical application of those things? Engineering. So if you couldn't do this though, like if you, or if you wanted to pick a dream job, what would your dream job be? Oh gosh. I, you know, I think I, I've done, I've just spent a lot of my life in athletics you know this, um, I think I would coach. I just love the idea of, and it's a little bit of what I do now, right? It's kind of consulting, but in the athletic world. So I, I get a lot of pleasure out of watching people reach their potential and being a part of that. See, and that's funny because, you know, we've golfed together. And the one thing that surprises me when we golf together is because I'm super competitive. I'm all about, I got to win. I got to have the longest drive. I've got to, I've got to win. And when we play together, you're competitive, but you're not competitive with me. You're competitive with yourself. So yes. that's, which is commendable. It's not someplace, it's a place I would love to strive to be, but I, I will never do that. So um, what, what is something that, that that surprised me about you truthfully because i know that you're um you're very athletic i know that you're competitive so when i saw that that bit about you what do you think is the part of you that surprises people the most well i think that piece probably would because i am i am competitive and i do Did i just feel your answer no not at all <laughs> no, i have a different one for you and and this proves it because right you said what surprises me i'm going to surprise you watch this Okay. Um, what surprises most people about me, I would say, is that I'm actually an introvert. Uh, I'm very social. I didn't even know that. I yes. had no idea about that. Uh, I, have, I have so many close friends, and I just love being out and about and, and making connections with people and connecting other people together. And um, you've seen this about me, right? We've spent a lot of time in those sort of settings. But I do need to go home and recharge every time I get my energy from collecting myself at the end of the day. and. Um, I'm a closet introvert. Who knew? So, so, right, I, I certainly didn't know that, not having spent time with you. Um, but so right now where we are with COVID, are you experiencing this as I am where I'm feeling like Martha Stewart without the ankle bracelet confined to my house in jail? Or is this something that you're not hating so much? Because I'm hating this. Yeah. You know, I get it. And it's hard for a lot of people. I'm, I'm okay, truthfully. And I say that because I, um, I want people to know they can lean on me because I am okay. Um, but I'm using it as a time for self-reflection. I'm using it as a time to uh, get a lot of things done and I connect with people like this and it's great. I'm looking forward to coming out of our shells when, when everything is over, but um, I'm definitely not freaking out about it. I'm okay. I'm comfortable in, in this space. And I feel like it's just people for people like me, it's my job to just be that, to just sit still, keep quiet, and capitalize on the fact that I'm not uncomfortable so that I can be a part of the bigger solution. I mean, that's, that's what there is to do. So with that, are you like, what's on, what are you finding like that your, your mind is going to like, what are you thinking about mostly while you're kind of collecting your thoughts and, and kind of becoming, um, 
kind of collecting your energy and, and, and doing some of that self-reflection. What, what is it that you're thinking about? I, there's one thought that's been passing through my head a lot that I've given a lot of attention to, which is, I believe there's a purpose for this. And, and a lot of people like to say there's a reason for everything. And, and oftentimes that's a catch all when something bad happens and you just want to feel better about it. It's not how I feel about this. I think there's, this has purpose and we're all meant to sit here until we are comfortable with it, including you. <laughs> because we have to be comfortable in the uncomfortable. And as soon as we get comfortable with it, its purpose for each individual person will reveal itself. And I don't know what it is yet specifically for me or for you or for anybody else, but this has meaning. And I think it's really important that everybody sits and thinks about what it means for them in their own personal mind, in their own space, and come out with something that makes them better. So we, we talked in the very beginning about um, being competitive with ourselves and, and being constantly focused on self-improvement. I think there's something to be gained here for everybody that will hopefully make everybody just just grow a little bit. Through right. That. Well, I know for me, like my, having my boys home um, for an unprecedented amount of time, all of us in the same house, um, is something that I, I yearned for and longed for, but didn't know how to make that happen. So I know for me, while it's it's trying for them because they're 18, they're seniors, they're missing out on things. I mean, we are spending an extraordinary amount of time together, which has been phenomenal and, and time that, you know, I wouldn't normally have had. So for that, I'm very grateful. Is there something that you're finding in your space right now while you're trying to come to terms with everything happening? Is there anything that you're finding that you're grateful for and what is it? I would say there's been a lot going on in my life in the last couple of years and it just feels like I've been caught up in this tornado and I'm grateful for the quiet and the opportunity to recollect myself and you know, reorganize, realign my, my work life, my personal life, all these different things that have been, um, you know, we, we all have a lot of balls in the air, we're type A people, and we can keep juggling them all day long, but once it, everything quiets down, then you can really, really focus on what you want, who you are, who you wanna be, and for me, it's, it's the quiet time, it's the quiet brain time. So something I don't think I've ever told you, but I'm going to share with you now, is that I can't pinpoint the time that you and I met. I really can't pinpoint. I know we, we met several years ago on the phone and we had phone conversations before we met in person and grew to where we are now. But over the course of that time, you have given me an insurmountable amount of advice on certain in certain areas of my life, whether it be professional or personal you, you, you're an amazing person when it comes to being a sounding board or someone that can dispense advice in an amazing ways, right? You just, you have an insight um, about you that's fantastic. And so when you had said initially that you wanted to be a coach, I, my mind immediately went to that you should be a life coach because you've, you've legitimately helped me in so many different areas. So with that said, what's the best piece of advice you were ever given? So, when you asked me about um, the type of job I want, I did say coach. But what I will say about being an athletics coach is that it's not that different from being a life coach. It's when I coach marathoners, the biggest thing I'm coaching is their mind, not their body. Anybody can write a training plan. But to coach that mental aspect, that's the same concept. So back to your question, what was your question? Um, if you, what was the best piece of advice? What's the best piece of advice that you were ever so, given? Okay, I knew I had a point. So um, the best piece of advice I've gotten is is along those same lines, right? It's a coaching aspect. So I was in graduate, I was in uh, undergrad, and I was applying to graduate schools, and I applied to some schools that I knew I could get into, and I was pretty satisfied with that. And one of the professors that I really loved and enjoyed taking all of his classes said to me, well, "Where'd you apply?" And I told him where, and he said, "Well, why don't you apply to some of the better schools?" And I said, well, I'm not going to get in. And he said, for 50 bucks, let him tell you no. So did they? Application fee was signed. So, so what I learned from that was take the chance. Be afraid to be judged. Go for the reach. Because for 50 bucks, let him tell you no. Who cares? And guess what? I applied to the best school for what? for what I wanted to go to school for. And I got in and, and that place changed my life. And I'm grateful for every second I spent there. And I never would have been there 
if he hadn't said to me, take the chance for 50 bucks, let him tell you no. That's fantastic. That's a great piece of advice to walk away. Step out okay. on the ledge. and Something I'm going to take away with me again from you today, something new. Um, but um, I'm grateful for you. I'm grateful for your friendship. I'm grateful for your being part of Claims Exchange, for being part of my personal life. And, um, and I appreciate you. And I appreciate your time today. And I thank you so much. Me too. Thank you. Thank you.